Hi, my name is Lee Eigenbaum, and we're going to be going over the law changes for 2021. A couple of things. One, I am not going to go over and read each part of the law change, so uh, you, you can pause the video at any point that you want. There is actually clips in here, and again, if you need to go back to a clip or look at it in more detail, you may do so. I'm also not going to cover every single change in detail. Those that will apply to us, I'll, I'll cover. Those that do not, I'll just go over briefly. Okay, first law change is on the field of play having to do with goalposts and crossbars. I'm not going to go into detail on this, but up here where it's in that purple bluish color, that is the reason for the actual change. The white is the law. If you see a cross out, that means it's been deleted from this version, the 2021 version. If you see a yellow underline, that means it's been an addition to the 2021. Okay, next one is the ball and having to do with the replacement of a defective ball. This is for consistency purposes. The, uh, the restart on if you have to replace a defective ball is a drop ball and that's just for consistency from the previous changes in 2020. Okay, next one is law four, having to do with player's equipment. This is tracking systems, which we do not use in most of our competitions. Um, if you do use, if you are of this nature, if you're doing games at this level, please read these. Okay, now law 10, uh, determine the outcome of a match, kicks from the penalty mark. This does apply to us. The key point to this is the kicks from the penalty mark are not part of the match. So this clarification goes along this line. If you have received a yellow card during the game or during overtime during the game, that yellow card will not carry over to kicks from the penalty mark. Okay, that goes for goalkeepers, goes for players, any player. Okay, next is with regard to the goalkeeper and encroachment. We've seen it a lot in the World Cup. Uh, with regard to how they've addressed it now, the first time, this is in kicks from the penalty mark, the first time that a goalkeeper encroaches, they receive a caution. And then the second time they would be given a yellow card, third time obviously a yellow card and a red card. Uh, next one is offside. Uh, this is a deliberate handball. The key component on this is again for consistency purposes. A player is not considered to be in an offside position if they receive the ball from the, uh, from the defender, directly from the defender, deliberately playing the ball, and now they've included by a deliberate handball. And here's a video, and if you, I'm going to slow this one down for you, but you can see the player just now actually puts his arm out, and I'll take that back a bit and I'll show you that. So right here, this player is in an offside position, the red player, maroon player, right here is where the handling occurs, right there. Okay, so now since that is a deliberate handling, that player, which was going to receive the ball, is not considered to be in an offside position. So you can see he's clearly in an offside position, and he scores the goal. Now, if the player had not touched the ball, that player would have been in an offside position. Okay, next one is handball with regard to fouls and misconduct. Key component here is the word immediately before. Well, actually, let's start with this. This is having to do with an actual diagram showing where the handball will be considered and where it was not. So it has to do with where your armpit is and then extending it across the arm. So it's very good. This is a very good diagram for us to be able to determine whether something is handling or not. Okay, the next component, and you can read this if you'd like, but the key component here is the word immediately. So this has to do with a attacker scoring a goal or creating a goal scoring opportunity. It has to be immediate and there will be some several clips here to show you this. Okay, so these are all immediate. These are all determined to be immediate by FIFA and IFAB. These all will result in a direct free kick. The player handles the ball right there. So that is a direct, that is immediate, 
and that is not a goal. That will not be considered a goal. Here's a set, another clip. And again, right there, he goes to goal, so that is determined to be immediate. We've got handling right there, and that is a direct free kick for the defending team. Goal scoring opportunity, so therefore it is a direct free kick for the defending team. Okay, on this one you'll see on the replay, it bounces up into his arm, creates an immediate goal scoring opportunity. It wasn't deliberate although his hand was outstretched, so one would consider that a handling anyway. Uh, but bottom line is it does create an immediately goal-scoring opportunity, and that, again, is an offense, and it is a direct free kick for the defending team. Okay, so now we're going to do examples of direct free kicks should be awarded, where <clears throat> this one is when, it, when the ball goes to a teammate, and it immediately creates a goal-scoring opportunity. On the replay, you'll see that it bounces off the player's hand that goes up in the air right there. Again, not, not deliberate, but nonetheless, it does go off the arm, does create an immediate goal-scoring opportunity, and therefore, it is deemed as a offense or an infraction, and it will result in the defending team having a direct free kick coming out. This one is tough to see, but at some point he handles the ball on the same thing you'll see on the replay. At some point, this player will hand the ball. Oh, the ball bounces into his arm and then comes to the player. Not deliberate, but again, uh, it results in an immediate goal scoring opportunity, direct free kick for the defending team. Okay, and now these are going to be uh, those that are determined not to be immediate, so we're going to allow play to continue. So on the replay, you'll see that the ball basically bounces up into the green player's leg and then hits his arm right here. It bounces up into his leg, onto his arm. It's not considered a, a uh, handle ball, and it wasn't immediate, so they allow play to continue. And then that would be a proper uh, goal or goal, uh, proper goal or goal scoring opportunity. It was not immediate. Okay, here's another one. Again, here he's going through five, six defenders. It wasn't immediate. It wasn't deliberate. And you'll see on the replay right there is when the ball was handled, but it was not deliberate. It wasn't immediate. And therefore, we're going to allow play to continue and a goal will be allowed immediate let me show you that okay ball comes out bounce off his leg then onto his arm referees right there deems it not to be handling it is not an immediate goal scoring opportunity there's 80 90 yards to go so we allow play to continue this is law 12 and this is with regard to um, the changes, here is the big one where it said it is usually an offense of a player. We went over that in great detail in our May um, in our May in service. I'm not going to go over that, but this is the current law. Okay, so now this one is illegal second touch by the goalkeeper. Now the key thing here is it's the illegal second touch by a goalkeeper not handling. So an illegal second touch by a goalkeeper results in an indirect free kick. Okay. So here we have if the goalkeeper plays the ball a second time, I'm going to read this one because it's important, plays the ball a second time with or without the hand or arm after a restart before it touches another player, the goalkeeper must be sanctioned if the offense stops a promising attack or denies an opponent or the opposing team a goal or an obvious goal scoring opportunity. So here what we're looking at is, is that if the goalkeeper plays the ball a second time, whether it's with his hands or with his feet, a second touch, that's an indirect free kick, and they would be sanctioned for stopping a promising attack or a dog so, which would either be a yellow card depending on how the uh, goalkeeper stopped the play 
uh, whether it was a um, whether it was a dog so red or a, a dog so yellow. Okay, and this is going to be an example of an illegal second touch. Okay, so obviously there is an opponent there. It results in an indirect free kick, and it will end up in that case with a yellow card for the second touch. And the second touch is not on the kick, it's here. And that would be a yellow card from that location. And a indirect free kick for the red team. Okay, so now these have to do with a yellow card for stopping a promising attack after a free kick. Uh, we once would come back and, and give the yellow card, but since the, the promising attack has been restarted with the free kick, we will now no longer caution. And there'll be some examples of that. So here's the player who's fouled, fouled again. Player then takes the ball, restarts with a quick free kick. So we are not going to come back and sanction the player. Unless one determined it was unsporting behavior for doing it twice. But we won't, do, we won't caution for, for, um, for stopping a promising attack. Okay, now watch the referee here. Blows the whistle, player puts the ball down, quick free kick, promising attack is restored, and we play. No yellow card there. And there's the language. Okay, and this one is for providing an advantage. And again, if we have a stop, if we have a promising attack and it's stopped, and we apply advantage, there will not be a caution. And here is the example. That's obviously stopping a promising attack or an advantage. I'm sorry, that's an advantage call right there. So no yellow card on that on that. For the because it's an advantage there wasn't anything that was other than it was a tactical foul so we're not going to give a yellow card because advantage restored the attack and there's the language for that one okay this has to do with the drop ball and the four meter or four approximate four yard distance the defending team must uh, maintain. And it will result in a caution. Obviously, let's use some <clears throat> intelligence here. Here's an example. The, this, the referee will not issue a yellow card, but he's, he is warning him several times. And these players are not four yards away. So what we want to do is basically hold off the drop ball. Let's make sure that the players are four yards, four meters away. Before we drop it, um, let's try not to give cautions for something like this, especially since it is relatively new. So let's just make sure we use some common sense on this one. Okay, so this is cautions for unsporting behavior. And this is the language. And you may read that. This is with regard to penalty kicks. And this will result in no retake. <clears throat> Okay, so before that would have been retaken, since it did, since it hit the goalpost or went wide, either one, it would not be retaken. I'm sure many of you remember that one was retaken because she came off the line right there. But in the new law, that will not be retaken because it did not, the goalkeeper did not have to save the, the ball. The ball didn't go, the, the goalkeeper made no save. OK, 
Okay, here's the language. More of the language of what happens during penalty kicks. This is the table. We should definitely review this. These are the VAR protocols. I'm not going to go over these. I'll just go slowly over it so you may pause and read them at your desire. These are glossary changes. Um, they're basically defining holding in the restart position. So holding, and this is good, I'm going to read this. A holding offense occurs <clears throat> only when a player's contact with an opponent's body or equipment impedes the opponent's movement. So let me go back to that one. So we see a lot of holding. The key in for us is obviously depending on the age group and, and competition level and level of play. Uh, you know, holding on one in one game may not be holding in another game, you know, but it, I think this kind of helps us, you know, does it impede the opponent's movement? If we use that as a holding, that will be a good uh, decision point, uh, like in the considerations, you know, does, if the player does hold, does it impede the opponent's movement? Does it change the, you know, the opponent's movement, alter it? All of those things we have to look at as, as a holding infraction. Okay, the next one is having to do with the restart position. So I'm going to read this one as well. A player's position at a restart is determined by the position of their feet or any part of their body which is touching the ground. So in this particular case, if there was a foul right now on this player and that line was the boundary to the penalty area and he was entering the penalty area, again, this is a lot to do with VAR, but in this particular case, that call would be made outside the penalty area. Now, this does not include offside. Offside, because the head is something we can use to play the ball with. Therefore, if this, if this were an offside call or this potentially an offside call, this player, if this was a halfway line, this player would be considered in an offside position. So it only pertains to the restarts outside of, of uh, the offside call. This is the flick up where the goalkeeper would kick the ball back to a player who would kick it back to him. Uh, they made a clarification on this. It's not going to end up in anything other than we're going to redo it. Um, if there's no persistence in doing it, we'll just, that's fine. Uh, but we're not going to be doing any disciplinary or sanctioning on this call. I, mean, I believe there's an example. Yes. Okay, so under the new law, we're going to stop play there and we're going to have them retake that goal kick or whatever that kick was. That's the last one. Um, again, you can review this at your leisure. You may stop the video as, as you'd like it to read any of it. Um, hopefully this is helpful. Okay. All right. See you soon.